Originally, I wanted to make this video titled something like what to do if you're stuck in low elo or what to do if you're stuck in whatever rank you think that you're stuck in. And unfortunately, that would be a little bit hypocritical for me to make that video because a lot of times what happens, people will message me. If you've ever been on my Twitch stream, people in chat will say things to me like, hey man, I'm 600 games in silver three and I seem to not be able to get out. What can I do to un be unstuck? What can I do to improve? And I always answer answer that by saying I can't tell you that exactly. The reason for that is I can't extrapolate from a wall of text to a person I've never talked to before, never seen how they play, never looked at their match history, anything like that, I can't possibly tell you what you're doing wrong. So rather than making today's video in that manner, I just wanted to give you guys some information what I feel like I would have liked to seen from other YouTubers or what tips I would have liked to know when I was in silver. Now I chose the title silver or a silver player for a couple reasons. It's kind of arbitrary. Honestly, I was never really a bronze player. When I first started playing ranked back in season five, I got bronze one after my original 10 placement games. And at the time I was just a Trindamir one trick. I would just play Trindamir top lane and just pop off every game. I thought the games in bronze were actually like really easy. I would get like 20 plus kills. I didn't feel truly stuck, which is the, the feeling that you're in elo hell like your teammates always suck there's nothing that you could possibly do better in order to carry and climb that feeling I didn't really get until about silver four and I was a silver four to silver two player in that range like middle silver for about three months so that's why I chose that time in my League of Legends career if that's if that's how you want to call it the first thing I think every player in this sort of range needs to understand is that runes and masteries do matter whenever I do coaching for somebody who is pretty low rank I mean bronze 5 anywhere from bronze 5 to like silver anywhere in that range a lot of people have their masteries completely messed up and the same thing with their runes some of the weirdest things that I've seen are like spell vamp quints I've seen AD blues on Riven and possibly the weirdest thing I think I actually saw one mid laner one it was a LeBlanc player that I did a coaching for that was bronze 2 that ran flat mana reds and to be fair to the person they said they haven't changed their runes since season 4 so making sure that your runes are completely optimal understanding that if you're a mage you want to run magic pen in your reds probably health per level yellows one thing that I see is a huge problem and that I would like to fix right off the bat unless you are playing a massively scaling CD champion someone who needs absolutely the most CDR they can get such as Riven or maybe a poke champion you don't want to use 45% CDR that extra magic pen especially on mages I see this shit all the time on LeBlanc and Ari no don't take 45% CDR take the penetration trust me with Sork shoes and this mastery and magic pen in your reds you will deal a lot more damage you will find a noticeable difference in your damage for sure but I'm not gonna go into every single rune and mastery just understand that it does matter it actually is important the stuff in the pregame definitely is important and make sure that is always correct now a big portion of this video is going to be talking about attitude and attitude is a huge issue it's an issue at every elo i mean let's be honest there are toxic people and there are flamers in every elo no matter what no matter what rank you are at in league of legends there will be people with shitty attitudes I'm trying to base this video around something that I've used in the past to help people understand why they may be in lower ranks. And let me explain it like this. Having a good attitude and a solid mentality is something that is very, very important for you if you want to get better at the game and actually climb in rating. A strong mentality can come from one basic idea that I like to use even for myself, even when I get frustrated and I feel like it's not really my fault when I lose and I, I can't get any better at the game and it's really just, you know, shitty that my teammates are keeping me in diamond rating if I think back to when I was a silver player and remember that this was not that long ago for me I am still basically pretty new to League of Legends brand new almost I never played on the old map it has never been the wraiths for me so it was not too long ago in 2015 in the at the end of season 5 that I was a silver player if I think back to then if I compare my knowledge of the game if I compare my mechanical skill the things I understood back then compared to now it's not even close it's 
it's not even remotely the same as much as I understand now compared to back then. I know so much more about minion control and wave manipulation, how to trade, when to trade, how to roam, when to move around the map, what pressure means, how to build, what itemization is the best for each game, understanding runes and masteries and matchups. And the only way you can truly fix this is just spending more time with the game, putting in the hours, because if you really are passionate and you really truly do want to get to that higher ranking, whatever it may be, maybe it's just gold for you, maybe it's just platinum or whatever it is, it doesn't matter, it's okay. Maybe you get to platinum five and you're like, okay, that's enough for me. If As long as you are dedicated to doing that and you put in the time, it is possible for everybody. I do not believe that every single person that plays this game can get to challenger. I think it is very specific to a lot of people to put in not only that amount of time, but have that level of commitment and natural skill at the game. I don't think everybody can get rank one, but I do believe that everybody can get to at least platinum. I think that is a very reasonable thing to think. Part of the reason, actually most of the reason why it's so difficult to get out of the low rankings, why it feels like people may be stuck in bronze five forever, can basically be thought of as a few things, but ultimately it's because they don't see the bigger picture. They don't understand everything that they need to know to get out of their ranking. You do not have to be a challenger player to get out of bronze, but you do have to be a silver player. And unfortunately, it's almost impossible for you to get the bigger picture right away. It all has to come together over time. When you learn one part of the game, you move on to the next part of the game. Think about it like a painting. First, you learn to do the brush strokes. That's farming, CSing, trading. You know, you learn to do the basic things, but then you have to learn the light and the shadowing and, you know, everything. It, it, shading and all of this stuff in order to make the, the bigger picture, in order to actually create the painting. But you can't learn to be Da Vinci and paint the greatest, most magnificent paintings in the world if you don't know how to do finger painting. It's all a process. When I tried to learn golf growing up, my dad is a huge golfer. He loves to play golf and I sucked at it. I've always sucked at it and he's tried to get me into it, but I'm just terrible. I'm god awful at it. And he always tells me, he never forgets to remind me that, well, first off, he's been golfing since he's been 20 years old. He's been golfing for 30 something years, whereas I've been golfing for 20 minutes. And he would always say the same thing. He would always give me the saying, Rome was not built in a day. So what you can do with League of Legends is learn each specific part one by one. Don't try to figure out how to be a diamond player in one one day. You can't learn how to be the best player you possibly can be an amazing player in one day. And if possible, you will want to use this concept and apply it to your gameplay. One thing that I used to do that has really helped me out over my time playing Riven specifically is I used to always mess up a few matchups. I could never beat a Jax and a Trundle. So literally on YouTube, I would just type in Riven versus Jax, Riven versus Trundle. And I, I didn't really care who it was. I didn't exactly care, you know, if it was Diamond or Challenger or Master Tier. I didn't care if it was Box Box or whoever. I just wanted to watch the matchup and just watch it over and over again. Watch 10 games of that exact matchup and see what works and what doesn't. Riven versus Jax, what did I notice? Well, one game there was somebody playing against Hashinshin's Jax and the Riven player walked up to him level one. He used Counter Strike and completely wrecked them with fervor of battle stacks and passive. So after watching that, even if it goes in the Jax's favor from that perspective, it still meant that I understood, okay, Riven probably can't trade with Jax level one. And being able to learn that specific mechanic in that matchup and just never forgetting that. Don't ever let that information go and you won't make the same mistake twice. One of my favorite quotes is that wise men were one stupid. They became wise because they learned from their mistakes. And this is definitely applicable here. If you do make a mistake, if you definitely struggle against a matchup at, you know, whatever champion you play, I used to play a lot of Diana and I always lost to Victor. So uh, once again, I would YouTube Diana versus Victor. If I watch that and learn from that mistake and learn how that matchup went and never make the same mistakes that I used to, I become a better player because of that. League is a little bit like math. It kind of builds on itself. Understanding a few basic concepts trading, CSing, roaming, team fighting, all of these things seem pretty basic to understand for a very high level player, but that's because they've had so much experience doing it. If you take these few basic ideas and create a foundation and build them up, you'll create a tower eventually, a tower of skill. You'll know how to do all these different things that will let you win games. Chances are in very low ratings, there's a difference between the player to 
a player. Maybe you're playing against a Trindomir player that's really, really good at split pushing and understanding pressure, but he trades awfully in lane. He has to get very snowballed in order to be effective. He has no idea how to team fight whatsoever. And I promise you, if somebody is a bronze player, there are so many ways to abuse them. One of the most important things for me that really helped me was understanding that you don't need a giant champion pool to climb. There's a reason why people are one tricks and one tricking is a thing. You do not need a massive champion pool. You do not need to know how to play 30 champions in order to climb. Just a few. And you don't need to play the highest carry, the most ridiculous Zed Yasuo Riven. I didn't even play Riven until I was gold. I didn't play a single game of Riven in silver. I think LS puts this the best when he talks about his tier list and he always puts Annie as the best mid laner to play in low elo and I actually couldn't agree with that more. The reason why Annie is so good in low ratings is because her weaknesses, her very punishable weaknesses are not punished at all. And in low, low, low ratings, we're talking like bronze five, any champion who has any form of weakness, literally any champion is good in bronze five. I don't think there's a quote unquote meta in bronze five. If you simply know how to play your champion better than the other player knows how to play their champion, you will win. Because a lot of time in bronze five, it's the first person to get a couple kills. They're going to tilt, they're going to flame, they're going to throw the game. Bronze five is a completely different beast, okay? And Annie is one of the easiest champions to have success on. It's also likely that people in lower ratings, it's not always, not always the case, but most likely people in lower ratings have very low frame rates and high ping. They probably don't have the best gaming setup. I know I didn't when I was silver. Shit, when I was silver, I was playing on a 20 FPS laptop. Now I have two monitors, a big ass computer, 144 hertz monitor, right? Like now my setup is fine, but before hell no. And finally, the last thing I have to talk about, if somebody told me how important this tip was and I, they have done a little bit better job about this but i felt like when i was in low rating nobody ever explained this to me why it's so damn important and on almost all of my coaching videos i do explain this concept but let me explain it one more time and give you guys the exact reason why this is just the most important thing for playing league of legends it has to do with the laning phase specifically and when you should use your abilities so let's say i'm laning we're just doing mid lane stuff everything is going fine when should I use my abilities? Now that this seems like a stupid question, but I'm serious. When actually should I use my abilities? When should I trade? Let's say this target dummy is looking to farm. Let's say I'm just chilling here and he wants to come up for this creep. When this target dummy or whoever it is, this enemy champion goes up to farm any of my minions, like I'm going to go up for this one. When I go up to farm this, when I stop to auto attack it, assuming I don't use any abilities, if I go up to auto attack this right here, I'm going to do it on this melee. When I walk up to do that, what happens? Well, I stop completely in place because, well, that, that's how the auto attack works. If, unless you have a bunch of attack speed, every single time you go up to auto a creep, you stop. Your character physically stops in place. Right here. I stop right there. So whenever your enemy laner, no matter what the matchup is, no matter what, the best time, the absolute best time for you to use your abilities on them is when they farm your creeps. When this is low, if it's an Annie or something who's going to walk up to farm this, just tag her with a Q because she can't do anything back. Because she is actually last hitting the creep, she actually moves up to last hit it, so the animation of the champion is targeting the creep, so not only does she stop in place, but she can't immediately throw an ability back. They walk up to last hit any of my creeps, he walks up to last hit it, oh he's gonna get it, tag him with a Q. And then you want to stand behind your creeps, the reason you want to stand behind your creeps is because it'll block any skill shots. But that is one of the most important things that you have to understand if you want to lane better. It's so easy to understand if you explain it like that. It makes it so much harder for your opponent to dodge anything because they have to immediately stop and, and hit it. This is time that they have to waste to stop and stand still. All right, that's gonna wrap it up. I thank you guys for watching today's video and I hope some of these tips and some of this advice was helpful for you. If it was, make sure to hit that like button down below if you enjoyed, hit subscribe for more if you like more of my content and I will see you guys tomorrow. Dust.